Hello, I'm Silas from Dino PC, and today we are talking about keyboards. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about different keyboards and uh, essentially a quick rundown, a little brief of what to expect when looking for different kinds of keyboards, what kind of features are more important than others, and realistically, what keyboard is best for you? So essentially, is it best to go for a mechanical keyboard or a semi-mechanical keyboard, or even say like a, a, a basic rubber dome switch kind of keyboard? What, um, what's going to benefit you most? Um, and how's that going to really affect your enjoyment of using your new computer? Is it going to improve your gameplay or is it going to improve your typing experience? Before we talk about the keyboards themselves, we're going to cover a few key terminology elements which will help us describe bits and pieces of the keyboards themselves and the switches. Primarily, actuation. This is where the key press is actually registered. The reset point, essentially how far the key needs to be pressed before it returns to its original starting point, flush with the rest of the uh, other keys. And then there's tactility or tactile feedback, which is essentially whether you actually feel the key press when it registers. So let's start with the basics. Some computer suppliers, say for instance Dell, might even package in a keyboard um, with a system, say for instance. So these typically are going to be your cheaper kind of rubber dome key switch uh, keyboards. Generally speaking, they tend to be not very sort of tactile, not very responsive, very, very basic in terms of what they're actually going to do. These rubber dome switches are essentially very quick and cheap to manufacture, therefore bringing the overall cost of the keyboard itself dramatically down. Um, the way they actuate is with a small rubber dome, which is compressed to activate the membrane switch. This, because of the rubber dome itself, makes them not really very specific in terms of their actual actuation. There's not really going to be a point that you can register as it being a key press. They generally tend to feel quite mushy, and overall, they wouldn't really be recommended as a precision keyboard solution. On the other end of the spectrum from rubber dome switches, you have mechanical keyboards. Uh, these key switches are going to be generally produced by one or two major manufacturers. You might have seen Cherry in the past, or Cherry MX key switches. They tend to be of a much higher quality and higher price point to your typical rubber dome switch. There are lots of different versions of mechanical key switches, so many that almost some are irrelevant. I mean, you won't generally tend to find many keyboards with like a clear key switch or a blue key switch. They generally tend to be the sort of thing that if you know you need it, you will actively search out that kind of keyboard. For the different key switches themselves, Cherry, as a major manufacturer, will tend to separate them out into different colors. Um, these divide up essentially their actuation, their tactility, and that way you know that if you're getting, say, a, a Cherry MX Red Switch, how it's actually going to feel and what the typing experience or gaming experience with it is going to be like. So that being said, with different colors, there are three major kinds that you'll find in most mainstream manufactured keyboards from, say, Cherry as a manufacturer of key switches, and these tend to be blacks, browns, and reds. To illustrate how these switches work, we have a little animation of black switches, red switches, and brown switches. This is to show exactly how the key operates uh, when, it, when it actuates. So Cherry MX black switches are the gamer's favorite. They have no tactile feedback, so a very smooth keystroke, essentially. The actuation point is in the middle of the key itself, so you don't have to press it right to the very bottom to have the keystroke registered. The reset point is at the very base of the key switch itself, essentially meaning that you have to press the key more towards the bottom to have it reset and come back level to the same point as all the rest of the keys on the keyboard. Compared to black switches, brown switches you'll find are actually quite different. The brown switch will have a very similar actuation point to a black switch, kind of in the middle of the keystroke, but you'll find that it will actually have a tactile bump, uh, a registered point which you can feel with your fingers when the key press is actually registered. This bump or tactility is preferred by typists or touch typists, people who essentially want to type as quickly as possible. Because you can register with your finger the actuation point of the switch itself, you don't have to press the key all the way down to the very bottom to ensure that the keystroke has functioned properly. This tactility is also preferred by some gamers who would appreciate being able to feel exactly where the key itself actuates rather than just being able to mash the key as quickly as possible. For gamers similar to touch typists, you'll actually start to learn where the actuation occurs, where that bump actually is in the downward press of the key switch itself. You can waste quicker! <laughs> Cherry MX Reds are very similar to black switches in the sense that they don't have that tactile response. They are also a linear top to bottom switch, similar to a black switch, however they require much less actuation force to actually activate the switch itself. Because the red switch requires less actuation force to register the keystroke, um, they are both better for typing than say the black switch, but also similar to black switches, so still quite good for gaming. They don't have that tactility, but 
Man, are they smooth. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just a quick overview of Cherry's most popular, most mainstream key switches, but you will actually find some companies have siphoned off that similar technology in a mechanical key switch sense, but have developed their own more specific key switch. So it's time to talk about Razer. So Razer have actually spent a lot of time developing key switches specifically for gaming. So these come in two different types, Razer's own green and orange switches. So Razer's green switch, as I say, has been developed more so for gaming. So it's still gonna be quite similar to a brown switch in the sense that it has tactile feedback, but this switch actually requires less force to actuate, less force to actually press down, providing a lighter, more nimble kind of gaming switch. This lighter key switch is preferred by gamers because it allows them to double tap and kind of move around a little bit quicker with their WAS and D. Razer's orange switch is a very slightly lighter switch still with a very similar tactile feedback to their green switch. So these orange switches have a lighter actuation force than say even the greens. That being said, their main benefit is that they're almost silent. This benefits the people around you who kind of hate that clicky noise, but also for YouTube content creators who don't want to be picking up all that typing sound when they're say streaming or recording audio. This clicky sound is kind of synonymous with all mechanical keyboards. Most are gonna kind of come with that as a sort of drawback. Some people tend to find it quite satisfying, like myself, I like to type on a keyboard. I like to hear the sound of the key actually uh, being pressed. Whereas Dave, say for instance, doesn't really find it all that audibly appealing. As a content creator, he prefers to have a much quieter environment when he's producing his content. That being said, although they do make noise, you can actually invest in O-rings, which will fit underneath the keycaps, allowing you to essentially silence them regardless of the color of the key switch. Another novel feature of the Cherry or Razer mechanical key switch is the cross-shaped groove on the back of the switch head itself on the keycap. This universal standard allows you to essentially buy kind of novelty keycaps or different material keycaps to put on your keyboard, say eliminating the numbers or going for stealth kind of ninja markings on the side of the keycaps for your numbers and letters. And now we're entering the weird and wacky world of semi-mechanical keyboards. With semi-mechanical keyboards, there's not much to actually say about them. They are essentially rubber dome switches, similar to your typical or cheaper membrane keyboard. That being said, the tactile feel and the overall sort of response to some people can feel a little bit more like a mechanical keyboard than the cheaper membrane keyboard. They do still have that same rubber dome, but they actually have a stem which sits above the rubber dome, allowing you to more directly press the rubber dome and have it collapse. A semi-mechanical switch is a good kind of thing to look at if you don't really want to sum up all the money for a, a proper mechanical keyboard. You just want to get an idea of what it's going to sound like and how it's going to feel. So that's covered the three most commonly sought after types of keyboards that you tend to encounter in the market today. There are a few other things to look out for though, some features which in some instances you might find quite useful. Some of these features start with kind of quite basic sounding things like a USB pass-through on the keyboard itself or audio pass-through to allow you to connect a headphone and microphone up easily without rummaging around at the back of your computer. This sort of thing is not really a key switch specific feature. This is something that some manufacturers might just chuck onto a keyboard of their choosing, essentially adding value to that product. Another potentially useful feature that you tend to come across on lots of maybe more gaming keyboards is like an LED backlighting. Uh, this isn't really affected by the key switch that you choose. It can be on both membrane and mechanical keyboards, but allows you a little bit more accuracy when you're typing, say for instance, in the dark. As with all kind of components and peripherals that you tend to come across in the computer market, there are some features as well which are a bit more, say, gamer specific than your typical user. Windows Key Disable, essentially a key or a button on your keyboard which allows you to disable the Windows Start Menu button. So say for instance if you're in the middle of a game of Battlefield and it's right at a climactic moment and accidentally you hit the Windows key, you'll be pulled directly out of that action. This is something you really don't want, and this feature actually allows you to completely disable the Windows key, preventing this from ever happening. Anti-ghosting is another feature that you'll find on some more gamer-oriented keyboards, but it's actually kind of quite a useful feature overall. Uh, Anti-ghosting allows multiple key presses to be registered simultaneously, essentially allowing you not to miss out on a vital key press at an important moment. This is especially useful in, say, an FPS shooter where you want to crouch and move at the same time. At least then with something like anti-ghosting, you can press all these keys at the same time and they'll all 100% be registered. 
Some keyboards will actually have extra keys, referred to as macro keys, that you can kind of see in, say, for instance, this Razer keyboard. These macro keys are essentially extra keys that you can program yourself with either a particular key press or multiple strings of key presses. So say, for instance, in something like Photoshop, if you wanted to press uh, Control, Alt and Z, or a multitude of keys to kind of do a particular action, you can actually have these programmed and registered to particular macro keys, making it a little bit more convenient rather than hitting tons of keys at the same time. So which keyboard should you choose? Which is going to be best for you? The key thing to initially consider is your budget or your price. It's not recommended really to be buying a £300 computer and a £100 mechanical keyboard. That money can be better spent on components for your computer, on things that are actually going to make a difference in games. As great as it might feel, smashing away on a mechanical keyboard, it's, it's not going to be that great when you're only achieving like 20 FPS in a game. At 720p or 360p. like. On your, on, your, on your phone. That being said, these expensive keyboards are here for a reason. They do actually genuinely improve your typing or in some instances your gaming experience. As I mentioned before, if you're looking at buying a slightly more budget computer, a semi-mechanical keyboard can be a really good starting point. This will provide a much better potentially gaming or typing experience than your typical kind of mem membrane keyboard, but without the price point of a very expensive mechanical one. And then for mechanical keyboards, because you have such a vast selection of different switches, it can be a bit daunting picking out the one that you think is going to be best. My advice would always be find a friend, go to a store, try out as many switches as you can to make an educated decision as to what is going to be most comfortable for you to both game and type on. But if you're lazy like Dave and you don't really want to bother doing all that research and trying lots of different things, then here are a couple of things to bear in mind. So for gaming, the options that you'll see most are generally black and red and there's a reason that lots of people tend to go for those. It's the lack of tactility, essentially a much smoother key press that allows you to press keys a bit quicker but with significantly more accuracy. With more specifically branded key switches like Razer say for instance, they are designed to be a bit more gaming specific but if you're a content creator, the orange seems to be a good option. It's going to be much quieter but it's still going to have that really cool kind of mechanical feel. If you think you like the idea of tactility or you tend to type a lot more than say you game or typing is your profession, then the brown switch is kind of the clear and easy choice. Unfortunately, as I've gotten older, I don't get the opportunity to game as much as I tend to type and so typing has become the priority. That's why I personally use a brown switch. And you like to annoy people. And I like the fact that I put people off, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and finally, if you just need a replacement keyboard for your old Windows 95 based system, then jump on eBay. Find the cheapest one that you can that's like a, a membrane key switch, like it really won't make much of a difference. Of course this isn't the most comprehensive sort of review of everything that's out there on the keyboard market. This is supposed to be just kind of like a roundup of a, a few sort of more mainstream options that you can potentially find and you might have trouble deciding as to which is the best to go for. So leave a like if you enjoyed the video, leave a dislike if you, I guess, didn't enjoy the video, leave a comment if you have something to say. If you want to see more of me, by all means, just say you do. If you don't want to see more of me, that's fine, I, I can find something else to do, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, thanks a lot for checking out this video and we'll see you in the next one. So it's time to talk about Razer. 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 Swag, swag, swag. So it's time to talk about Razer. So it's time to talk about Razer. So it's time to talk about Razer. Oh, is that Razer you say? Oh yeah, it's Razer. <laughs> so these switches come in two different flavors. We have one that's green. Oh, that sounds stupid. So these switch, <laughs> that sounds stupid. Okay. Flavors. Flavors, I know. Like orange? <laughs> no, but green is not really, green is not really a flavor. Okay. If you work in an office with lots of other people around you, don't buy a mechanical keyboard. People will hate you after about five minutes. All that clicky clacky typing. This is true. I hate anyone yeah. with mechanical keyboards. I love it. I love. The I sound. hate them. The sound of progress. The sound, the sound of, of interrupting my videos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Imagine if you had this constantly. Mm, yeah. What I get all the time. The typing experience. Yeah. What, with my mullet. What the? You can find more information here. <laughs> that would be quite cool, actually. Maybe we should. To find out more information, click on this mullet. <laughs>